the Ricky Smile and Morning Show. It's the front page news. It's what's trending now. All right, Ricky Smile and Morning Show. Yeah, we got the one and only Dr. MJ Colley with your COVID-19 update. Dr. Colley, what's up? Good morning, Ricky Smiley. We're here today to, to, to clear up some of the discussion that people are having about the antibody test and what happens after you get infected. Are you protected at that point? So Dr. Deborah Burks, who heads the Coronavirus Task Force, states that we now have evidence that we have learned that you should be reassured that when you get an infection, that you do make antibodies and your immune system remembers how to do that. So you may not currently be making antibodies. So oftentimes people have had antibody tests. For some reason, they've repeated the test and then the test was negative for antibodies. And they say, oh, my God, I don't have protection. Well, what happens is as soon as you get re-exposed, your body remembers that. It then quickly makes new antibodies literally within hours. So people should not be concerned that the antibody levels may wane. It's becoming increasingly clear that the virus behaves much like any other. I told you that, you know, the science of immunity has not changed, and this virus is no different from any other. It's just very infectious, but it's still a virus. Yeah, Dr. Carl, you, there's this uh, doctor lady from Houston, and she's talking about hydrochloroquine, and then she's still giving this to her patients. Can you tell us something about, like, hydrochloroquine? Because something happened with Trump, and, you know, he it, it got deleted off of Twitter because he was breaking the codes or something. Can you tell us about this drug? Uh, yes. Yeah, well, you know, that doctor is a part of a large coalition of physicians that do and that do utilize the hydroxychloroquine and do believe that it is a safe treatment. Uh, I understand it is perfectly safe for treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and a variety of other issues. But I think it became politicized. But uh, people around the world are still using hydroxychloroquine as treatment for this. Uh, again, the uh, FDA has not recognized it in the United States. And uh, and there are a couple of studies that show that uh, it may not be effective. But again, there's data and evidence around the world that it does work. So in the United mm-hmm. States, there are people that use it and people that aren't using it based on uh, not necessarily the science. So uh, she gave out, uh, you know, a, a strong endorsement that said it was a cure. I would not go that far. Mm-hmm. But I know that there are physicians that are using hydroxychloroquine as part of their treatment for the coronavirus. All right, let's go to the phone. You're on with Dr. Collier. Good morning. Okay, Dr. Kaya, I want to know, I, my son is getting ready to go back to college. So, you know, with his antibodies and he's fairly healthy, how do we make sure, you know, that he stay that way moving into the, the flu and cold season? Okay, so if he's tested positive for the antibodies, then he should have immunity. Uh, that is the, the, the course of this disease process. But when you're thinking about schools, and we're talking about everything from elementary school, uh, middle school, high school, and college, you have to take this into consideration. Three things. One is closed spaces closed contact and crowded places. So in those circumstances, you have to evaluate anytime you're leaving your room or leaving your home. Just take those things into consideration. Is it a closed space versus an open space? Uh, is it a closed contact with individuals because social distancing cannot be maintained? And it is a crowded place, which is what most schools are going to be. So they are still in real time trying to decide how to do this, split the schools and the children in half, keeping them, keep a smaller number in classrooms all day, uh, et cetera. So uh, it it is still being made up as we go, and they're going to come up with the best options for doing so. But all of that will fall apart if if large numbers of people start getting infected, just like they're doing in the baseball. You know, large numbers of infected, they're they're canceling games, and then probably we end up canceling the season. All right, gentlemen, Dr. MJ Collier, good morning. Hi, good morning, Dr. Collier. Um, I have a question. I have a 17-year-old grandson who has uh, systemic lupus, and he developed um, COVID right when it first started. And my concern is we expected it to be extremely bad because of this pre-existing condition. He was hospitalized, but he's okay. I'm concerned about him um, getting this illness again. Um, and I'm hearing what you're saying about the, anim- the antibodies. Can you tell me if that's something I should be concerned about for him? Uh, yes, you should be because oftentimes individuals with lupus, the therapy that they're on compromises their immune system. So one, I would confirm that he does have antibodies to do an antibody test on him, but understand he's still, uh, you know, compromised by that disease process. So when I talked about, uh, you know, you, the protections that people get from immunity, we're talking about regular people that don't have immune compromises. They have not had an organ transplant. They're not on dialysis. They don't have immune challenges. So under normal circumstances for normal, regular people, they should have that response. In his circumstance, because he had a severe enough case, he should have antibodies, but I would still test him first and still follow all precautions, you know, masks, 
gowns and gloves. Uh, I'm sorry, masks, goggles, and uh, social distancing. Mask, goggle type glasses, and social distancing at all times. If he has an option right. to stay at home, I recommend he do that and do school online. All right, y'all, with MJ Collier. Good morning. I'm a uh, teacher and coach in the state of North Carolina. And my question is, how concerned should I be with uh, are we going into the phase two of sharing equipment, sharing you know, footballs and whatnot? And how concerned should I be in the classroom? Is this something that I can still catch immediately, even though I'm not an adult and the kids can't carry it? Like, how concerned should I be? Okay, you should be very concerned because uh, sports that they're opening up now, particularly with young people, they don't have control like they do in the bubble uh, for the basketball players, the, the professional NBA players, etc. So, you know, kids, now that they're going into the point where they're going to have contact, they're going to be cases. And then as, a, as an adult, you would be very susceptible to uh, catching that virus from one of the kids who may not have symptoms but may be a carrier. So you need to make sure that you're boosting your immune system optimally optimally so that your risk of disease is decreased. All right, gentlemen, Dr. M- Dr. MJ Collier, good morning. Good morning. How safe is it to have sex with someone that's not in your immediate home? Uh, if, well, <laughs> if, if they are uh, COVID question. and corona-free, put their head, 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 the, the head up under the pillow. <laughs> it's difficult to maintain social distancing and have uh, sexual intercourse. That is the discussion that we have had many times. <laughs> so you're putting yourself at risk. But uh, you want to uh, uh, hopefully that that person uh, is not infected with the disease and then you should. But, again, it's an at-risk behavior because you're in a closed space, you got close contact, and it's real crowded when you, you know, have an intercourse. Yeah. So, look, <laughs> look, 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 put the head up, put the head up under the pillow and turn the ceiling fan on high and open the windows. And that, okay, that's that's good it. advice, Ricky, actually. That's very good advice. I know it is. Dr. Collins. <laughs> I no idea. How you think we surviving over here? All right, y'all. <laughs> <Not that. laughs> Gotta get it. <laughs> Go have some mosquitoes and a couple of flies gonna get off in there. I right, go get you a good screen, but you turn that ceiling fan on, put the head up under that cover, and get to work, you heard me? Put your mask on, put her mask on, you ain't gonna be able to kiss. Open the window. Yeah. He ain't like, he like if you be wanting to kiss anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you, you do, do what you got to do. what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Dr. Collier. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let everybody know how you can be reached. Okay. First, these are the opinions of Dr. MJ Collier, not those of the Ricky Spiley Morning Show or its radio affiliates. You can reach me on all social media at Ask Dr. MJ. And to learn how to boost your immune system optimally, then go to my website, lipodrop.com. Get your vitamin D, omega-3 fish oil, and lipoimmune. The lipoimmune product, one pill, one time per day, the greatest thing you can do. 